Welcome to this course intended to help you with capturing enough good information in your photographs to help you achieve research grade with your iNaturalist observations. We take photographs in, for iNat to assist with the identification of the observed object, also to show the distribution of the observed object. Your objective should be to have your observation achieve research grade status, which will occur when the identity of the species is confirmed by more than one person. And note that good photographs will help others to provide that confirmation. So it's just some general tips for use in the field. It's important to get your focus right. Uh, nothing worse than having a poorly focused uh, uh, photograph to try and work off. The autofocus on some cameras might not be able to detect what your intended focus point is and may focus preferentially on the background, particularly when the object is small. If the object is small, use the camera's macro setting to optimize being able to capture as much detail as sharply as possible. If necessary, put something solid behind the object, for example, hand or backpack, to ensure correct focus or use manual focus if your camera allows us. Uh, the specific aspects that you need to capture when dealing with flowering plants, ideally a front view of a flower, a rear view of a flower showing the calyx and the attachment to the stalk, front and reverse sides of a leaf and its attachment to the stalk, a view of the whole plant showing the placement of leaves and habitat, and please avoid just taking a photograph from above try to get down to the level of the plant itself. Uh, in the case of specific uh, families, uh, in the case of Asphodelaceae, which is the pokers and the aloes, you need to get a shot of, of the bract which is found below each flower tube, as well as the presence and absence of teeth on leaves and of the cross section of the leaf. In the case of orchids, Try to show the whole plant, including the base of the plant, so the placement or presence and absence of leaves can be seen. Show the front, side and reverse view of a single flower to highlight the presence of it and size of any spurs. In the case of the peas, show the keel, style, calyx, number of leaflets and the leaf attachments. In the case of the daisy flowers, show the front, side and reverse view of flowers, the placement of leaves and the reverse side of a leaf. In the case of grasses, show the inflorescence and attachment of a leaf to the stalk as well as where the plant emerges from the ground. Many of the iris family are very slender and tend to move in even the slightest wind. Hold an inflorescence in your hand and get a close-up of a single flower from front, side and reverse, showing the bract if possible as well, as a general shot of, and as well as a general shot of the whole plant. Try to get a hab habitat shot if possible, or include some description of habitat when posting your observation. For example, whether the plant was grown in damp conditions or sun, shade, edge of forest, on rocks and so on. Uh, here we have a, a couple of images of a, an orchid, uh, have an area epibacter uh, and here you have the, uh, the whole plant showing where it emerges from the ground, and on the right we have uh, a close-up view which shows side view as well as frontal view of the you know, flowers. The next slide shows um, one of the pea family, an area sema. Uh, and we have a, a front view of a flower, uh, a top view showing the calices, um, a full plant showing the reverse side of the leaves as well as the front of the leaves, the leaf attachment to the stalk, uh, and the shape of the trifoliolate leaves as well. In the case of daisies, we have a whole plant. We have a plant showing the reverse of the leaf. Uh, we have a photograph showing the, uh, the front of the flower as well as the reverse uh, side of the flower and the calyx. In, in the grasses, here's the inflorescence, 
the point of emergence from the ground and the legule, the, the place where the grass blade leaves the stalk. A couple more grasses, uh, the flowering head again, the legule leaving the stalk, the whole plant, again the whole plant and the legule. Here are some iridaceae, both dioramas, uh, and in these images uh, we were lucky with the wind and uh, caught the image uh, reasonably sharply. And you can see the, uh, the flower as well as the black quite clearly. So in, in the case of trees, what you want to try and capture, the whole tree, uh, the bark of the tree, front and reverse sides of leaves and their attachment to the stalk, the flowers and or fruit. If the tree is tall with all detail out of reach and backlit, try and increase the exposure of your photograph to ensure adequate exposure of the tree and overexpose the background if necessary. Think about uh, a habitat shot as well, uh, because then you can include the observation in the veg map project. So here we have a, a photograph of a tree. This is Miletia grandis showing uh, a good detail of the pods. There's an overall view of the tree, a little bit uh, dark, um, but fortunately with the additional information of close-up of the front of the leaf and the reverse of the leaf, it's fairly easy to get an ID on this particular image, or set of images. Here we have uh, a fairly obvious uh, tree species. This is Cassonia paniculata. And um, just a, a view like this is, is pretty immediately obvious. In the case of the second two sets of photographs, uh, it's not immediately obvious. And here we have a close-up of the fruit and uh, a shot of the whole plant showing that this is Euclea scabrida. Uh, and um, the, the, the detail of the two photographs would help for an ID. In the case of animals and birds, what you want to try and get is a front and side view if possible. And clearly it's not always possible because these things don't move to order. And uh, maybe a ha habitat shot if it's not obvious in the above. Here we have a, a few nice images of raptors, these three, and uh, some garden birds. Uh, in this particular case, you would want to actually split the observation so that you have an observation for the, uh, this, the wax pool uh, as well as the mannequin. Um, but each of these are, are very nice, clear observations and will easily lead to identification. Just a, a matter of interest, uh, in this particular image, there's a, photo, uh, a shot of the uh, wing tag on this species. This particular bird uh, has been uh, ringed and uh, it has these patagial tags. Um, and if you can blow up this particular image, you would be able to read the number on that tag and, and identify that image because there is a database of information on the, uh, these species. Uh, as far as the insects are concerned, um, you want to try and get a front and side view. In the case of butterflies, wings open and closed. And if feeding, a shot of the food for interactions. Uh, here we have some insects, a wasp and a couple of grasshoppers. Uh, and here you have the wings open, wings closed, same here. Um, and a few more uh, images by Peter Small showing the inside of the, leaf, the wings and the outside. Uh, a couple of lovely dragonfly shots, uh, enough detail how to give a positive ID. Uh, in the case of spiders, unless you've got manual focus, you might find it very difficult to get a sharp image of a spider in a web. If it's on a hard surface, then it's much easier. Um, but it's also quite desirable to capture some detail of the web if you can. So ideally, you want to be able to use manual focus. Here are a couple of shots that show uh, the detail of the spider fairly clearly. Again, and there's a nice shot of a web uh, with the spider in it. As far as reptiles are concerned, do not attempt to be to get too close to the subject. Use your zoom fe feature to get the subject closer if you can. Uh, here we have a vine snake. Uh, these, this species is very inclined to be uh, 
still and, and not move, relying on their uh, uh, camouflage, so you can get fairly close quite safely with them. Whereas this uh, uh, green mamba will not allow uh, a close approach. So there you need a, a zoom lens if you want to get a decent photograph. General tips for use in the field. Uh, if you want to get your lighting right, where you have control of the, these camera variables, getting the right combination of ISO, shutter speed and aperture is important. If you're unfamiliar with how to do this, use the automatic setting, the A plus on your camera settings, to allow the camera to apply the, an appropriate combination of the variables. But use auto ISO to allow for greater flexibility. In poor light, use your flash and or increase the ISO and increase the aperture size, i.e. use a lower aperture number. But remember that the, a high ISO value can lead to more noise in your image. In bright light towards the middle of the day, try to cast a shadow over the object and all the background within the viewfinder, as that will give you a better uh, exposure. Remember the camera's light meter measures the average illumination in the frame. Ensure your object is adequately lit by compensating when there is a big contrast between the object and the background. Some cameras have an auto white balance setting which will set the white balance to suit the ambient conditions. However, these same cameras often have the ability for you to select particular white balance conditions, such as sunlight, shade, cloudy, and so on, to suit the conditions in the field. But remember, if you are setting these manually, that you should switch if the field conditions change. Tapping with the wind and other movement, uh, you need to hold a section of the plant in hand if you can. Alternatively, increase your shutter speed using the shutter speed preference, SV, and changing your ISO upward, uh, and or use a flash. At least try and get a shot of the whole plant, hoping to get enough detail for later, later ID. Try to provide some indication of size or scale when it is not obvious. For example, like having a pencil or a backpack in the picture. In terms of posting your observations uh, into iNet, uh, if you have, uh, if you're using your camera, you can take advantage of the built-in GPS. Um, uh, so, if you have a camera in your phone, then you can use the built-in GPS. Uh, some um, uh, digital cameras also have uh, a GPS built in and you can leave that on or alternatively uh, later on you can um, try and ident identify where you took the photograph on Google Earth and get a location from that. Uh, in terms of cropping, um, while it might help to highlight the object by cropping the image, Sometimes the whole image or a bigger part of it provides useful cues to <coughs> assist with the ID. In that case, duplicate the image and provide both close and more distant aspects when upload, uploading the observation. And when the object might not be in its natural habitat, mark it with the captive cultivated tag when posting an INAT, as this avoids incorrect inclusion in distribution records. If you are interested in adding to uh, projects, um, if you're particip participating in a bioblitz such as City Nature Challenge, join the project to ensure that your observations are included in that project. If you're po posting an observation of a species of conservation concern, you should add this to the Red List project by joining that project and then after you've um, added uh, an observation to INAT, go back to that observation and add it to the project. If you have habitat shots to go with your observation, add these to the VegMatch project. And again, in this instance, you would have to go back to the observation you've already submitted and add uh, the, um, the project to the VegMatch veg -match project. Uh, and again, just to emphasize, if the object might not be in its natural habitat, mark it with captive or cultivated when posting an INAT, as this avoids an incorrect inclusion in the distribution records. 
I hope these tips help you to achieve a higher success rate, a search grade with your iNaturalist observations. Enjoy your iNatting.